Not only is this illegal, wasteful, preventable, but it's making people sick. Chemicals that come off a flare, even when it isn't producing smoke, are extremely dangerous. Uh, this is a very cheap and uncontrolled way, for the most part, to incinerate chemical gases and, and toxins. They're operating like they would in, in the undeveloped world, where there is no regulation, where there is no you know, government, really, uh, agencies that are supposed to be doing something about it, you know, where it's, they have free reign. <laughs> To see that in Europe, I think, is quite shocking. Uh, you know, so I, I think it's very bad. It's a very dangerous situation. You have a lot of people living near the plant. Um, you have people living on the hillside above the plant, more at stack and flare level. You have an incredible concentration of companies who are continually expanding and want to expand and increase their emissions. You have no plans to do any real monitoring. Uh, it's a situation that's bad right now, and it's seems destined to go out of control without the intervention of, of citizen efforts like the Bucket Brigade to, to rein them in and to start revealing what's going on. What sort of way could something like that affect? I mean, considering that how much ions drop out of the... Well, anything that's higher, I mean, it's dependent on meteorologic conditions. There are meteorologic conditions known as downdrafting, however, that can bring it down. Uh, depending on how dirty it's flaring, I mean, I've been near flares when actual physical liquid material is falling to the ground on the other side of the fence line in the neighborhood, dropping on people. Yeah. Uh, but generally, I think the concern from the facility I saw is for the people who live at higher elevation and further away from the flare emissions. But it depends. If the flaring is extreme, uh, it could be impacting, in the meteorologic conditions, right, it could be impacting people that live right next to it as well. Pollution you're talking about. Pollution you're talking about. The fugitive emissions of benzene from the refinery. Uh, that depends on the weather conditions too. But I, I would think that you know you got a pretty high concentration most of the time within a couple of miles of that refinery of benzene at least. Uh, if you're talking about you know the the nasties that are coming in the black smoke off of the flare or the brown nitrogen oxides that pour out of those stacks that are visible, or the yellow sulfur dioxide that's pouring out of there, that stuff's going miles. You know, it's going miles. If you're talking about the mercury that's coming out of burning the oil and the coal, that's going thousands of miles. And it's going into the sea, and it's going into the fish you eat, and uh, on and on and on. And if you're talking about the dioxin that's coming off of the plastics, and stuff that are manufactured there, that's going as far as the North Pole. They've gone to the North Pole and found dioxin from incinerators in Ohio. They've traced it back to a specific source. So <laughs> it's here, it's there, it's everywhere. But I think you know the worst impacts are clearly within the residents within a couple <coughs> of miles of that facility because that's constant. You know, and, and there's little chance for dispersion unless it's a really howling wind. And so, and, and as the video said, and as you know, doctors will agree, it's worse on the kids. The kids don't choose where they live. They're born somewhere, they're trying to grow up, they breathe at a higher rate, their lungs are smaller, they're trying to develop a lot of these chemicals, stunt development of organs, of everything. So, in particular, the kids within that area are the ones that are really, you know, at the most risk and suffering the most. I noticed that uh, during the winter months, when the north uh, uh, wind is blowing, we get a very strong smell. So I suppose you could call us all a bunch of sniffers. <laughs> um, yes. uh, but the, the worrying thing is that there may be some emissions which are not uh, traceable, because when that happens, I try to close the windows. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what if there are some emissions which are oh, not noticeable to the smell? Oh, Can there are. something about these? Yeah, there, no, I mean, there's plenty of chemicals that don't have an odor. Uh, In um, the, the visit that you've had today and the refinery that you've seen today, how would you say that compares to some of the other problem I refineries? I think it's one of the worst I've ever seen. <laughs> I think it's worse than as bad as I saw in Africa. I mean, I'm shocked. I'm really shocked. It's horrible. It's horrible to think something like that is operating in Europe.
And I feel like I'm stepping back in time or stepping into a developing country. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, it's bad. <laughs> it's very bad. It's very dirty and it's very unnecessary. And if they could employ more people, they could pump more money into the economy by cleaning that plant up. And they could be protecting their residents' health and their workers' health significantly if they would do so. His um, role and the focus is on refineries, but given that the refineries in Spain, if we want a bucket brigade for the future to work, which will involve cross-border cooperation, it can't be launched as a Gibraltar attack against the Spanish well, refineries. So what it has to be is a, is a tool that um, we've been taught to use against pollution monitoring, and that uh, the tools that he's offering us are also usable to monitor other forms of pollution that we have but, in but Gibraltar. Is, that, that was you know? precisely why I asked that and question, because very without important. the Spanish side, it will just be seen as a... a so the know, way it's portrayed in the media the will be very, very, we very also crucial have a to the future. Station. A lot more, a lot more than, 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 than we think they might. And I think one, I of, think the big, true. one, of, the, one of the valuable things of this is that they're going to get damn scared that somebody else has also got to know yeah. what they know already. Uh, but I think there is a lot of information there, and I think there's a big challenge here for all of us, with our neighbours across uh, the bay, to to set up a strategy and to keep bombarding them with information and tell them that we know what they know, and provide these solutions. Engaging people on the Spanish side about it, and there is interest in you know again starting from the point of well, let's just find out what people are breathing over there. And let's just find out, you know, uh, what's crossing the fence line from these plants, how healthy or unhealthy it is, and start, you know, uh, involving people in becoming more educated and involved in monitoring what's happening with their health and the air that they're breathing, you know, every couple of seconds as an